Hey everyone, Daniel Vardinor for Fitness FAQs. Are you the type of person that has never been able to touch your toes? Are you someone that's constantly stretching your hamstrings, but they never get more flexible? They always remain tight. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to permanently be able to touch your toes and beyond having permanent increases in your flexibility. Before I show you how to forever be able to touch your toes and beyond, we need to understand what affects our ability to reach the ground. The two key areas of restriction are the calves and the hamstrings. The calves cross both the ankle and the knee joint. When bending forward, if the calves are tight, movement will also be limited. The hamstrings cross both the hip and the knee, so when you're flexing forwards, the hamstrings are heavily stretched. One of the biggest reasons which will determine if you can or can't touch the ground is pelvis position. As the hamstrings attach at the hip, if the pelvis is anteriorly tilted to begin with, the hamstrings are already on stretch. This severely limits your range of motion. Here's me doing a toe reach with an anterior pelvic tilt. I can only get to about mid shin height and it feels like my hamstrings are about to tear. This is legit, I'm not faking this. This is literally as far as I can go. Now let's take a look when I simply do a posterior pelvic tilt. I haven't stretched, I haven't done anything between these two attempts. And you can see that I can get my hands to the floor because my hamstrings aren't starting at a lengthened position to begin with. We need to teach our body to start and remain posteriorly tilted at the pelvis when we're reaching towards the ground. If we can master just this alone, we will be able to reach closer towards the ground without even stretching our hamstrings. I want you to start this routine by foam rolling the calf. Find tender areas and spend at least two minutes self-massaging the calf. You can work up and down, side to side, or even sustain pressure whilst moving the ankle through a full range of motion. By foam rolling, we down-regulate the brain's perception of stretch, which will allow us to move further in the exercises we're about to do. I want to teach you a PNF or contract relax stretching protocol for the calf. On a single leg, keep the knee extended straight and allow the heel to drop towards the ground. Stretch in this position passively for one minute. After one minute, press the ball of the foot into the ground without moving. You wanna squeeze really hard staying in an isometric position for 10 seconds. After squeezing for 10 seconds, slowly relax the tension, allowing the foot to drop further towards the ground. Now from here, actively draw the ankle upwards, contracting hard the front of your shin for 10 seconds. Cramping may be experienced, and this is what we want. We want to teach our body this range of motion is safe, and that we have the strength to handle it. After 10 seconds of driving the ankle upwards, relax for another minute, and then exit the stretch, repeating on both sides. Remember earlier we talked about the impact of pelvis position on range of motion? We wanna teach our body how to control posterior pelvic tilt. A highly effective way of doing this is using a front plank with an exaggerated posterior pelvic tilt hold. Squeeze the glutes as hard as you can, legs remain straight, breathing forcefully into your stomach. Don't just chill in this position, really squeeze hard for the best results. Hold for 30 to 45 seconds. Now we are going to tie in some hip flexor strength with lumbar pelvic control, teaching our body it's okay to flex the hip while lengthening the posterior leg muscles. Start with by flattening your lower back against the ground, then extend your knee straight, pointing your ankle upwards. I want you to do 10 reps with each one trying to flex the hip as high as possible dynamically, and then on the 10th rep, holding at the end range of motion for 10 seconds. Of course, repeating on both sides. Lastly, to eccentrically lengthen both the calf and the hamstring, and to further solidify our strength at an extended range of motion, an effective drill is to use both a straight and a bent single leg deadlift. It's important to do both straight and bent legs because each will emphasize the hamstring lengthening at either the hip or the knee. 
Doing this exercise is far superior to static stretching as we are teaching the body to get strong at long muscle lengths, which will make reaching your toes a breeze. With this one guys, five slow reps with a pause at the bottom for both the straight and the bent leg variation. Do so on both legs. I want you to repeat everything again, except for the foam rolling. We've already done that part. Just go through the stretches and the range of motion exercises. Now comes the fun part. Let's play around with these inchworm variations to solidify our body working at extended muscle lengths, as well as solidifying that lumbo pelvic control so that we can permanently be able to touch our toes and beyond. Lastly, as we have been doing a fair bit of forward bending and flexion of the spine, it's healthy to decompress by doing some spinal extensions. Your back will thank me for it. Awesome guys, that's the whole sequence. I want you to retest your hamstring flexibility. How'd you go? Did you get more mobile with this routine? Are you still having tightness? One thing that I didn't cover in this video is the involvement of the sciatic nerve down the back of the leg. If you're still feeling tightness, you need a different approach to increasing your mobility, and I'll cover that in a separate video. As you can see from this video, it's important that you choose the correct exercises and approach to address your individual weaknesses. Guys, take the guesswork out of your training and start training in an optimal way to reach your goals as fast as possible. For more information, visit fitnessfaqs.tv to master your body.